Thank you very much. Let me hand over to Dr. Asli. Come in, Dr. Asli. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, my friend, uh, Dr. John. Well, I'm not going to fly high. I'm going to go down the uh, ground and uh, walk like a chicken. So maybe that will help uh, you know, understand. But um, uh, first of all, thank you very much uh, for Sunway. And also, I'm very, uh, I'm very fortunate to have uh, to be with uh, people, for, with, uh, with uh, for experts and also uh, colleagues who are uh, into education and also the future of what education is, is going to be about, right? Um, I, start, I will start with, uh, we have 10 minutes. By the end of this uh, uh, presentation, uh, we're going to have, you know, I'm going to have questions um, for us to think about, right? Uh, of, if it, with any presentation that I give, I don't have the answer, right? But I have more questions than answer. Uh, and maybe this is a way for us to explore. But in talking about the, you know, it's a very uh, conceptual and uh, you know, challenging topic, like um, such as the interplay of technology and cognition for liberal, liberal education. Uh, the key point is this: if I can summarize, you know, uh, first before we uh, begin, it's like what are the skills that we need uh, to conceptualize things and to analyze and also to uh, to make changes and also to create new artifacts as cultural beings, uh, as a consequence of uh, the you know, rapid. Uh, development of technology, and how do we, uh, how do we prepare our brain, and also the uh, the uh, the people that we're educating for these changes that we don't know uh, what it's all about. Right? The philosopher Lao Tzu once said that the only permanent thing is change, and as soon as we uh, as soon as human beings uh, as soon as human beings carve the stone, then uh, we you know the uh, the beginning uh, that begins the uh, what we call the act of destruction. Right. Um, so this is the whole idea. Uh, let me let me pull something to this, right? One second. I <clears throat> okay. Apologize because there is uh, what we call a thunderstorm and uh, in in this area, and I have to always be prepared for you know the possibilities of the machine is not working. All right, so we're good now. Now. In talking about this, uh, I always begin with uh, talking about, in order to props, uh, uh, Einstein once said that, uh, in order to solve a problem, you cannot be solving the problem from the plane, the same plane that the problem arose. So that's, that's the problem that we have now. We sometimes fail to look at things philosophically. Um, philosophy is the mother of knowledge. And when we talk about technology, for example, right, uh, it's a very complex uh, phenomena of human uh, evolution. And uh, when we talk about technology and, and changes that's happening as it relates to liberal education, uh, we begin with to talk about what is the philosophy of technology. Can we uh, move this, uh, the next slide, please? Right. All right, thank you. Right, we need to consider any changes that's happening, mega changes, mega structural changes, mega trends in society must begin about technology. Let's begin the questions on philosophy of technology and the culture of technology, which is anthropology, and also the politics of technology. Technology is not neutral. It's owned by forces outside and it's been created as artifacts and also control. The artifacts of learning will be able to control the direction of technology. All right, next, uh, next, uh, next uh, uh, set of uh, notes, please, right? And technology, as we know, is an evolving system of meaning because culture is also meaning. Technology has culture, and it relates to the, uh, the process of industrialization and cultural evolution. Uh, I wrote my dissertation on uh, the interplay between technology and culture and look at the evolution of the, the creation of the multimedia super corridor, the creation of the uh, city of Cyberjaya. And uh, these two elements of technology and culture is very strongly re related. And I, I look at what is the future of this society. That was about 15 years ago, right? And I, when I look at technology, we look at uh, you know evolutionary markers and literacy, meaning that now today we people we, we talk about uh, being in the industrial industry 4.0. What does that mean? Post industrial revolution, post humanism, everything that is post 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 that we attach to it. Uh, and yet we look at ev evolution of technology not from industrial revolution itself, in fact, but from the beginning of civilization, so from Sumeria and Egyptians and also the early Chinese uh, civilization. So everything has 
agency and elements and creations, and also it changes the way we uh, become literate. Right? All right, next please. So, and technology, uh, if you, you know, for those in literature will understand uh, uh, this, this whole idea of Frankenstein, right? Was written by Mary Shelley Wollstonecraft, and they talk about the dangers of creating something that we don't have control over, over the centuries. No, in future, we don't, uh, we, we don't see, uh, we cannot see where this technology is going, but we know that it is changing at the rapid, as if it has a life force. And this is what's happening in the age of AI, you know, smart machines, and the age of, uh, you know, 3D printing and space exploration, as if we don't have any control, but we know that things are moving and it changes the way we do things in society, right? They'll talk about that a little bit more. Now, last one <clears throat> for the slide, the last point. So knowing the understanding, uh, understanding the whole idea that uh, technology changes and sometimes we don't have any control. Uh, sometimes we think that we have control, but we misunderstood the word progress with, uh, with uh, you know, with uh, something that is other than progress that involves technology. And then the question is that Malaysia and the technological experience, uh, are we experiencing an ongoing insurmountable challenges? Just look at the experience of the multimedia super corridor and also the, you know, the digital communication revolution that we had in the 19, uh, 1990s, early 1990s. Where is it going? Are we continue to be dependent on technology from outside? Are we continue to be grappling or struggling with where, uh, where is our workforce ready? Is, a, is a, you know, our generation of children in schools ready uh, to be in this, what we call industry 4.0? All right, next please. All right, um, you know, as it relates to intelligence and artificial intelligence, uh, so these are the things that we need to consider, right? What is intelligence and uh, the, cognitive psych uh, the so cognitive psychology is the ability to understand uh, the, the nature of intelligence from a psychological perspective and how do we educate the complex brain in this age of rapid technological changes? Okay, next please. I've always uh, thought that the whole idea of uh, today, Industry 4.0, is is you know is is can be, you know can be summarized into this whole idea of singularity and multiplicity principle, meaning that we look at things as very complex changes, but then again we try to bring it together and we start losing it. We try to bring it together, and this is what the age of fragmentation is about. We are fragmented. Our consciousness fragmented but we try to make everything whole again and I, I always uh, you know and before I start lecturing and teaching uh, my classes I will always start the first week with complex uh, chaos theory and complex system the butterfly effect of things and it is more relevant now when we talk about uh, you know the development of technology itself from 1900s the first industrial revolution second industrial revolution those two happen in Britain and the third industrial revolution in the, in the United States, uh, the dimension of the computer, and now with the age of smart machines and industry 4.0, how do we look at all these changes and analyze it from a you know a system uh, of so complex that we talk about? Uh, you had to use a different theory, like complex theory, uh, and any invention of the artificial intelligence will have implications, right? Social relations of production, meaning that factories are going to be changed, uh, the nature of factory is going to change, people are going to be needing the skills, and what are the skills going to be uh, uh, used for, it's going to be used for this new industry, and how are we going to prepare children, again, this is a question of education today, is our education from K to 12 to postgraduate education ready uh, for us to be living in this future, yet the future is now, so that's a question, right, all right, my last slide is this, right, all right, so what does it have to do with liberal education? Okay, now that's not a, a, you know, it's a very interesting word, Talibanism in the age of AI. Now, sometimes I have to throw some words because it's interesting uh, how to look at contradictions, right? Uh, okay, let's uh, move on to the next, next uh, three sets, right? In order to think, to create, to come up with new ideas, to think, uh, you know, with, with intensity in diversity, and to look at things, the challenges ahead, we have to liberate our mind and through education, through freedom in thinking, freedom to create new things and to be uh, you know, entre uh, entrepreneuring and uh, enterprising and pioneering thinkers. We can't stop 
we can live in a world in which thinking is not allowed. And that's what I, I, I put in the words, right? Talibanism and totalitarianism, right? Uh, which will limit, which will close uh, the mind of any people in any society, right? And also the COVIDism and historical challenge of development of nations. Now, this is a, this is a black swan uh, phenomena that we have, uh, you know, uh, almost exactly 100 years after the Spanish flu of 1918, right? Similar, similar implications, uh, similar challenges, uh, but in a different time, a different uh, century. Now, this is, this creates tremendous amount of rupture. This creates not only rupture, but also disruption. Uh, in the United States, 60% of the, of the jobs that were created in 2008 were gone, right? So now it's emerging new. And, and the, the, you know, those, uh, the industries that benefit from this are industries that relies on high-speed internet access and technology, right? Amazon. Walmart, those that 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 uh, that ma has mastered uh, the communication technologies are the ones that has flourished uh, many for right, and that's what we need. We need all the more now education system that is uh, progressive and uh, is in according to you know based on the American system of education uh, philosophy is called Dewey and John Dewey talk about the ability for people to think to teach them how to think and not what to think. So this I think could be the antidote in order for us to prepare our next generation uh, to, to address the challenges. All right, I think I have a, we have a few more, uh, last, uh, this uh, last slide. And uh, I had a chance uh, over the uh, three summers to teach uh, the joint teaching with a uh, university in Mexico. And uh, most of we focus on, uh, on talking about the work culture in the age of information technology. And the projects that students did was to analyze the future of work based on the disruptions that's happening today. Uh, so I think this is what we need to look at, right? The uh, mega structural changes, and also how do we look at, uh, you know, how do we harness of cognitive psychology for human survival? And uh, lastly, uh, second few, uh, uh, the last uh, set of notes, the, the whole idea of futurism, and uh, how do we look at take futurism as an idea and pull it apart and turn that into uh, a, a agenda for education so that we can teach our next generation of, you know, the, the, the importance of uh, looking at data, big data, analyzing and moving forward rather than be stuck in the, in the past. Now, although I teach world history, right? I teach world history, sociology of the future and cultural uh, perspective, but I, I see history only as data for people to move forward rather than be able to live in, in the past in, uh, uh, entirely and also endlessly, right? So, we're using the data and also to come up with ideas and also to programs for our next generation to think about the future and to not just to imagine by using data to build scenarios and to look at things like, uh, you know, skills like future wheels and to look at where technology is going so that we will not be lost in the quote unquote the future. Uh, last, uh, second last, Generation C is what we call Generation COVID. Today we are educating, uh, you know, hybridity. Is it entirely hybrid education? Is it uh, entirely virtual, entirely remote, or is it entirely uncertain that we, we, you know, we are experiencing and also we're trying to implement? And lastly, finally, right? Uh, you know, relevant to what we're doing here in, in this webinar is how do educators, whether you're educating children uh, from the kindergarten or whether you're uh, educating uh, people who have finished their doctorate and wants to do a degree, how do we design? What's, what's going to be the pedagogical or educational design that, you know, that would be coming out, out, out of this. One is, uh, you know, the rapid uh, uh, advancements of tech technology. And number two, um, the era of disruption due to COVID. So I invite all of us to, to you know, to think about all these things. It's a very broad ideas that touches on the philosophical, anthropological, and political aspect technology and the importance of liberal thinking education so that uh, we don't get into uh, and the next generation will not be confused and be homeless, jobless and clueless. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Asli. Uh, Wow, you did a great job uh, to summarize all that in such a short time. Thank you very much.
uh, I think uh, as Lee used some big ideas and big words, and we'll try and dig deeper. Three big interactions I see. One is change and constancy are being interfaced double all the time. So social media, for instance, is in making us and forcing us to interact with the rest of the world in ways we never thought was possible or even imaginable. But we are forced with that. Uh, on the one hand, you're watching CNN and understanding what the Talibanism is. On the other hand, the questioning of Talibanism is also happening on social media. So this is one aspect. The other is the idea of techno technology itself. The word techni tech tech and logos means the how-to of studying about the how-to of techni, the techniques of doing things. How do you dig below these techniques and understand them. The third is the big idea of cognition. We are on the learning end, so we cognate and we understand issues, but is our understanding the same as the other person's understanding? And the final issue, uh, although uh, uh, Asli didn't directly address, is the on his paper the title of what do we mean by liberal education? But I think he summarized it in the form of agency. We are all agents of the choices we make. We have a choice to either blindly comply under the rubric of Saya Yang Menurut Penta, or I who follow orders, or we make choices. I come to a fork, I choose to go right, I, go, I can go left. Uh, that's agency, and you make the choice. You are the agent who makes that choice. The next idea that Asli uh, flashed on his technology and culture was the idea that the idea of change itself is changing. If you thought the word change meant something, that word itself is changing in its meaning. So it's real-time change. Change itself is changing real-time. In that predicament, the challenge for any individual as a respondent to all of this is, do I lose control? Am I losing control of the world? How do I maintain control? And where do you find that control? Is it in the external? COVID reminded us that the external cannot be trusted when change is changing because you don't know which next door neighbor has COVID infection and will infect you and you don't know what stage of your infection would be and how you would survive the infection. So this was the third set of ideas. And uh, finally, he tried to pull it all together in cognition and AI. Okay, the world of technology is bringing all of this together and I uh, love a professor, Peter Senge. He didn't teach me, but he was a well-schooled scholar in this field of change and leadership, and he described the world today very accurately when he said we are in the messy world of reality. It's a truly messy world. We cannot be comfortable in any one category of ideas. It's a messy world, and unless you get your finger into the mud and feel the mud and sliminess of the messiness, we won't be able to comprehend and make sense. So making meaning and sense is getting involved. If you, say, if you stay uninvolved, then we stay out. So with that, let me ask Asli some questions. First question, is there an alternative to closed loop learning? And how do we change ourselves to open loop learning? Especially from this idea of an impact of both COVIDism and if I may do, use your term, Talibanism. Uh, it's a very good question. Uh, we have to let, we have to uh, increase the uh, our, our effort to you know to introduce liberal arts education. Here, I mean, I didn't elaborate, but liberal education is such a uh, such a misunderstood word. It simply means to to, to master the arts and sciences. That, are, that that has been created uh, existing in this modern world. 
because it is true, for example, through uh, strengthening our understandings of the arts and sciences, for example, uh, that and, and then doing uh, and challenging ourselves to advance knowledge in these fields, at the, even at the level of a secondary education, that we're able to grasp the bigger picture and understand what's happening in the world of AI now, which is even experts here trying to uh, you know, understand what it's all about. So we, our, our background in, in, in liberal learning is, is weak. So we lost that part of humanism in, in our education system because liberal education, humanity is a fundamental uh, as, an, uh, you know, as a balancing act for this uh, highly technological world that will, according to Stephen Hawking, uh, the greatest danger of humanity is the AI. It's not environmental, uh, climate change. So I think, I hope that answers. So we have to, to, to enforce the, uh, the, you know, the teaching, not enforce, but also really cultivate the love for liberal arts and humanities. Thank you, Asli. Thank you. Uh, okay, now my second question to you is, now I bring myself down to the level of the individual, any of the individual listeners in this audience today. The question to you is, how do I first, I mean, I'm above 60, so this question is framed within the logic of a 71 year old. Number one, first, how do I unlearn? I may have learned last 70 years all the bad habits or even the language of black and white and grays, but don't know the language of rainbow colors. How do I, I unlearn that? Number two, once I can unlearn that, which is habitual, how do I begin to learn anew? Okay, learning anew requires unlearning also concurrently because the technology is today changing faster than I can keep up with technology. Every so often I have to call my neighbor, a good friend of the family, and say, hey, Rupinda, come and help me figure this technology out because he's about 20 years younger than I am or 30 years younger and he's able to deal with the technology a little better than I can. So this question, how do we learn, unlearn, and relearn within the context of all the listeners who are maybe 50 years younger than both of us? Thank you. Okay, very good question. Number one, you're still young because the lifespan now is 100 years old. So uh, number two, well, number, the answer to the question is that it's, it's never too late to learn anything. Right? Number one, how do you unlearn things? Of course, it's, it's by... Uh, number one is is it's is to reading to discussing, but the principle of diversity of opinions that we allow uh, to consume and also to appreciate uh, points of view, uh, because knowledge of course knowledge explodes and this explosion of knowledge is so tremendous that we can get, and and to choose what is it that we 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 want to know that is practical to us without trying to understand that we want to be the Renaissance man or woman and try to know everything. And the choice of reading set we, we, we make is, is also part of what we live for, for example, right? Uh, so, th so this is whole idea that, uh, that to be able to, I'm fortunate, for example, to be engaging with younger people, younger students uh, who has, you know, new ideas, new perspective. So I get into their, 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 their lives, whether they're, they're undergraduate, whether they're, they're, they're graduate students, uh, to get into their lives and have some perspective. Uh, in the end, they become my teachers. Uh, why? Because they are the ones who are living in this present and we are the one who is going to be, uh, you know, keeping up to date with all the things that's happening. So, uh, again, knowledge comes from different perspectives. One is from philosophical, from religious, from cultural perspective, and also from scientific perspective. So we, we aware all these things, then we know where knowledge is, is from, uh, comes from, and we, have, we can make choices. What do we want to know? And what do we, 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 we think that we, sh we don't have the time to learn, but, you know, uh, we are drowned so that we are not drowned in information and stuff for knowledge, let alone come with, uh, you know, be able to understand with wisdom, the things that we know. Hopefully that. To learn anything. That's, uh... Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Asli. Now at this stage of uh, the webinar, we'll switch to the other speakers. We have four other speakers. I'll invite each of them. They both, they each have 10 minutes 
And the first, I'll go in the sequence that we advertise them, except for the lady who couldn't join us. Uh, the first speaker is Professor Graham William Wilkinson, who is currently the Vice Chancellor of University, uh, Sunway University. He's been in Malaysia since 2012, but has been Vice Chancellor in other uni three other universities before, experience at different levels. And he will join us. And may I introduce him and give him the floor for the next 10 minutes. Thank you very much. OK, thank you very much. Uh, I'm delighted to be here. And uh, let me just try and share my screen. OK, hopefully everyone can